Okay. So now what you're probably wondering what to do at this point is uh, how do you apply textures to the surfaces in your map? And there is there is a way you can do it in SketchUp to where the exporter will simply transfer it over and then apply the textures in Hammer when you uh, load the map. But uh, there's a very limited amount of textures that you can use in SketchUp. I think it's like 14 or 15. And it's usually best if you apply the textures in Hammer anyways because Hammer uh, is pretty close to the source engine and it'll give you a good idea of how to look. If you haven't already, hit view and then go to 3D textured polygons. That way the 3D view here will uh, show the, the uh, textured polygons or the textured shapes so that you can see the texture that you've applied to the shape. So we'll go ahead and start off with these four buttons here. These control uh, the, the graphics that you place on the shapes. And so this is the first one you're going to want to know how to use, Toggle Texture Application. Click that, and that opens this. And as you can see, the texture that you have is the default one right now, Gray Grid. So if you click the drop-down, you have access to all the textures that Hammer has available for you. And a lot of them are from Half-Life. So we'll go ahead and make it Metal Citadel, Metal Wall. And then you can hit Apply, and it applies that texture to there. And then if you left click, it'll keep it on that setting, and you can right click on other walls, and then it simply makes it that texture. However, be careful because applying the same texture to a lot of surfaces, especially like the same sur surfaces that are very visible to the player, can easily make a map uninteresting and, well, fairly dull to play on. So what you want to do is spice it up a little bit. So scroll down a bit, and we'll change uh, the floor to... I suppose we can change the floor to that. And then of course we want to use this texture for that wall. And then the ceiling, we're going to want to change to another texture. We'll make it this. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And that's how you apply textures to your map. So. And that, the other tool, uh, the other tools I'll show you are the decal tool and the overlay tool. Now the decal tool um, basically can add a graphic, um, and I'll show you what I mean by the graphics that you have available to you. You over here, you want to make sure that you have this shown on the right. It's this little drop down that says texture group and then current texture you want to go under current texture and then scroll down until you see a decal that you'll like. Um, we'll go ahead and choose uh, let's see what we have red glow? Red glow fade. All right, I wonder if that's a graphic or an actual just a static image. Some decals are actually animations so you never know what you'll wind up with but that's why you test the map in the first place instead of just giving it to your friends. But I guess we'll put that there. So that's a red glow, I suppose. So you can just plant those all like you want. And the thing about decals is that you cannot resize them. However, decals are the least intensive on your CPU, so they're the best for making your map a bit more efficient, if you can use them. Overlays are the next step up. They're like decals, but they use more CPU, but you can resize them. See, so like that. You can stretch it like that. So you can make your graphic a little bit bigger. And so I guess I suppose we can start that up and see how it looks. It'd be good to see how the textures look in the game as well. Because as, as you can see, the textures are working perfectly. The red glow is there. Wow. All right. Have my fun. Okay. Now, before I throw you into anything else, I'm going to teach you the last bit of the basics of making a Gmod map, especially an enclosed one, and that's lighting. Now, um, these are the two objects that I told you to delete when we first made the map and compiled it into a working Gmod map. Uh, these two are the default entities that are placed 
to make a sort of sunlight for open maps. And again, I haven't figured out at this point how to make an open map yet. Uh, I've been look I've been doing some research and it's like it, there's a skybox setting or of some sort, but it, it's really advanced stuff. But I'm not going to go into it. But for now, these two objects are the default objects put onto your map to create a sunlight. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you run your map completely enclosed with those two objects on the map. Because remember when I told you that uh, leaving these two objects on will create a source of light, thus Hammer by default will uh, not illuminate the map in the in the, pre in the, in the non-dynamic lighting that you saw when we first saw the map when we had no lighting object in it whatsoever. Now that there is lighting objects, Hammer's not going to light it up that way. Instead, Hammer's going to leave the map lit with the lights that we have, and because the room is completely sealed and the lights are on the outside, uh, the room should appear completely dark. So that will be demonstrated as soon as the map loads up here. As you can see, yeah, well, aside from that decal which I placed, which apparently emits light, but as you can see, we have no idea, we can't tell uh, where we are until we turn on the flashlight. As you can see, we are in our little map, textures and all. But there is, of course, no light, and that is a problem that we'll solve right now, so I'll go ahead and exit Gmod now. And so now what we're going to do is place some lights in the map. So, I'll start you off, click the Entity tool, right here, the white bulb thing, and then in the Objects drop-down, over here on the right pane, you want to scroll to Lights, like there's four uh, ob entities with light in front of them, you want just light, not light environment, not light spot, some, on some occasions you may want to use light spot, but for now we're just going to use light. And what light is, it's a basic omnidirectional light, you just click to place it, use the selection tool and then double click on it to edit the properties of it. And with this you can click on brightness and you can, these three numbers in front right here, the 255, 255, 255, though, that, that's the color. And you can pick a color for your light, moving it around on this table or just leaving it on the bottom to make it just a plain white light. And then this fourth number on the right is the brightness and you can change that, we'll make it 400 because this is a fairly small room and it's not doesn't have to be that bright 200 is the default brightness that's not very bright at all all these other settings you can just leave alone and then your light will appear in the game we'll go ahead and run the map to demonstrate and with this you can have all sorts of different lights and you can create all sorts of different effects and as you can see there is our supposed light it's just the light object, so it's not visible. It's no visible object, it's just a point on your map emitting light. And as you can see, it illuminates the area pretty well. And like I said, you can adjust the brightness, change the color, and you can really make some interesting effects on some maps, and it really helps to make your map more interesting and more awesome in general.